Welcome to Insanely Positive. Your oasis of joy when the world seems gray and full of grumpy faces. I'm Suzanne Freiherz. Thank you for joining me. I'll feed you buckets of joy to bring out your best self so you can live your best life. Hello, everyone. Today, I will take you back to the time when I was at university and worked a lot of different jobs to pay for my education. And one job was being an English tutor. In the company I worked for, I always got the so-called problem cases. And that is the key word for today, because today we will discover how words create worlds. I will talk about how words affect our thoughts, our actions, our view on the world, and our view on ourselves. And most of it happens without us even, even being aware. So, how did I become the go-to girl when someone was labeled as being a problem case? Well, it all, it all started when I had a short break between two classes and I was in this lounge slash kitchen where all tutors and teachers could have a cup of coffee and have a little chat. So I was having a cup of coffee and my boss came in and she said, I have a new student for you. And she added, he's a problem case. And I remember my reaction when I was standing there with the coffee cup in my hand and I was really shocked to hear this choice of words in relation to a nine-year-old boy. So I asked my boss what it was, what was problematic about him. And she told me that a couple of colleagues had already worked with him and they all said that he has absolutely no talent for languages and he's not motivated and none of them had any success with him. So I decided that I will not accept this frame of him being a, pro a problem case. Um, what do I mean when I say frame? Well, it's actually what it sounds like. <laughs> a frame is an interpretive framework. It means that every word triggers an abundance of associations. And one word contains additional information. So one word always kind of comes with a field of more information. So when we hear a problem case, we may say it lightly and not think of it further. But what happens is that an abundance of associations are being triggered and activated. And what's very interesting and very important to know is that we're not even aware of the additional information that is being triggered and influences our thoughts and actions. So when we hear this person is a problem case, it immediately changes the way we deal with this person. It shapes the image that we have of this person, even though we have never met him, we already have an opinion about the boy. So when it comes to tutoring someone, when a teacher hears, ah, oh, that's a problem case, they, without being aware of it, give up on the boy before they have even met him or worked with him. So you can imagine, and I have been talking about empathy before and I will continue to talk about empathy because I think empathy is something we all need to practice regularly and I think our world needs more empathy. So I invite you to 
just for a moment, imagine and feel how this boy felt during the tutoring sessions, always sitting there with someone whose body language and choice of words kept telling him, it doesn't even make sense that we are here together because you are the problem. So I can't stress enough that all that happens without us being aware. Every tutor means well. Every teacher means well. But still, they communicate problem case without being aware of it. So that's why I'm doing this episode today, because I think we all need to become aware of the power of language, of words, and that words do create reality. And so back then, I knew what I had to do before meeting the boy. I needed to let go of this image and this label of problem case. And I needed to stay open and curious and ready to help him in whatever way he needed me to help him. I was convinced that together we will find a way. And I focused on this state of mind because I wanted my brain to integrate this information to completely accept it as real. The reality that there are always solutions for everything. And what I find helpful when I do stuff like that is to just have a closer look at words. It might sound a bit strange, and maybe it is, but I love to think about words. <laughs> I love to think about what information fields they are triggering. Um, where do they come from? How did their meaning change over time? And the meaning of words change over time because humans change and our view on the world changes. So they always reflect our reality. Uh, reality. They don't on, only create it, they also reflect it. So I had a look at the word problem and I realized that what it meant in the beginning, let's just call it the beginning of the word problem. <laughs> uh, first, it just meant task. It literally means thing put forward. That's it. So it just meant something is here and it wants to be dealt with or it wants to be solved. And that's it. And that was fascinating to find out that in the beginning or first, there was no negative connotation to the word problem. It was just a neutral thing, something saying, hello, here I am, deal with me. <laughs> and then I found out that the meaning of a problem being a difficulty came up in the middle of the 15th century. And during my research, I also found out that the term problem child was first recorded in 1920. So that's just a couple of interesting facts. I hope you also find it interesting. And um, that just helped me to see and to realize, okay, a problem is basically just something that is here and wants to be dealt with, that's all. So I kind of used this information of the original meaning of the word to transform this label of a problem case. So that was one thing that helped me and made it really easy for me to stay positive and open to meet him. And let me just say something about another thing my boss had said that day, <clears throat> that he has no talent for languages. Um, I see it happening a lot. When we look at an expert, a professional in his or her field, it's so easy to look at him or her and say, ah, oh, this person is very talented or this person is very gifted. <laughs> and talent kind of always implies 
that this person never had to work for his or her success in her field. But if you ask an expert, a professional, what made them so successful, they will all give you the same answer. All of them would say that their success is the result of a lot of work and persistence. And it's not about talent. I had a chat with an opera sing singer um, who I worked with, and she was very successful singing on stages all around the world. And one day we talked about her singing and her career, and she said with a smile, you know, it's kind of actually a little sad how little talent helped me to be so successful. It's really all about hard work and effort. <clears throat> so I just really wanted to mention that because I think it's good to know. And I hope that it helps you to pursue whatever you want to pursue and not let some idea of being talented stop you. So I never cared about talent and I just didn't care if a student has talent for languages or not. I, I wasn't interested in that at all. So because I knew uh, from my own experience that talent, um, it causes you to feel passionate about something. I think that's what talent does. And when you have a passion for something, you're interested in learning more and you deal with it often, right? So when you're passionate about something, you kind of seek out humans and places and occasions where you can deepen your knowledge. And I think that's what talent can do for you. You deal with this field of interest more often and more willingly. But that's really all because then you need to study, you need to make an effort, you need to work. And I know from my own experience, because when I came to university, one of my grammar teachers had us all sit down in the beginning of the semester and he said, okay, everyone, please raise your hand if you feel what is right and wrong when you deal with grammar. Everyone raised their hand. Then he smiled and he said, well, I am very sorry to tell you that you will lose this feeling for language and you will need to work hard. But you will understand this language like never before. And then when you have the knowledge, your feeling will return, but you will realize that you're not dependent on, on it anymore. And that's exactly how it was. And I really wanted to mention that because I think it's a relief to know that you can do whatever you want to do just by working and by doing your best. And don't let the idea of being talented or not stop you, okay? So... Moving on to this so-called problem case. Um, the first class with the boy came. And in the beginning of the class, what we did was, what he did was, um, he told me everything I had heard from my boss. He told me he doesn't have a gift for languages. And he was very insecure. And he sat there on the chair and he barely looked at me. And of course, that's no surprise, because never in his tutoring experience had he heard something positive. And he had taken on the image of being a problem case. He accepted it as his reality. And he didn't tell me with words, but his body language was very, very clear. So that had become his world. He had heard the words problem case so many times 
that it became his self-image. And of course, there was frustration, and he even was kind of scared of the language. And that's easy to understand. And you can imagine where his self-esteem was. Yes, it was very, very low. So I began to work with the boy, and you know what? He was a quick study. He was willing to learn. And we got along great. And he was so successful in English. So how did that happen? <laughs> well, I began the first class with a chat. We didn't study right away. I was looking for some aspect in his life where he can relax and open up a little bit. And I found out that he was passionate about mathematics. I could see that he began to glow when he talked about maths. So for me, that was vital information because then I knew what I had to do. I explained every grammatical structure in a way he could relate to. So I changed my words and I began to explain a grammatical structure as if it was a mathematical formula because I knew that he will feel comfortable and confident to hear it that way. And in the first class together, he had his first success. And I can't tell you how it felt to see him when he got the solution right. He looked at me and he was glowing. He couldn't believe it. So that was one thing I did. I adjusted my choice of words to make him feel comfortable and give him a sense of security and to take away the fear and the doubt that he had built up around English. So that was really magical. And also, I did something else. In every class, I kept pointing out his strengths and his successes. I focused on the positive 100% and I said it. I told him. That is important. I didn't just think it. I told him. And in the beginning, I could see that he heard my words, but he couldn't, he couldn't believe them yet. He had this image of himself being a problem case. That was his reality. And then he heard something positive and that didn't feel fit into his reality. And he kind of didn't really know what to do with it. But, you know, I, I'm a persistent person. <laughs> I kept telling him. And after a while, it got through to him. And I could see that his reality begin, began to shift. And that his view on himself changed. And that was fantastic. Because with self-esteem... Learning is so much easier, of course. So that was a very, very, very important time in my life. I learned about the power of positive motivation and positive wording. And by not accepting a reality that labels kids as being problematic, a door opened and... My students began to learn with joy and became successful in a field where they never thought they could be. And all that just because of words, just because of positive communication. So after I had worked with the boy and he was successful in school, I got all the so-called problem cases in the company and I worked with kids and I also worked with grown-ups. And the grown-ups, they came to me because they had to. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't want to. <laughs> they 
needed to learn English for their job. And in the beginning of the very first class, every one of them told me the same thing. I don't have a gift for languages. So I told them what I told you earlier about this idea of having a talent or a gift and that it doesn't mean that you don't have to learn and everything just magically comes to you while you're napping on the couch, <laughs> but that we all have to learn and that we all have to make an effort. And I just explained to them that learning a language is the same like learning to drive a car. You just have to get some explanation and then you have to practice and keep learning. And when I told them, they began to relax because they got the feeling, ah, okay, well, if everyone has to make an effort and everyone has to study, I can do that. And by just being very honest and clear about being talented or not, that door opened. And they were like, okay, I learned to drive a car, so I can learn to speak this language. <laughs> and that really took away their insecurity. And they were ready to go. They were ready to learn. And then I did what I did with every one of my students. I used positive motivation from the beginning to the end of the class. <laughs> Always focusing their attention on their strengths, on their successes. And I always adjusted my choice of words to describe certain structures in a way they could relate to, depending on what interests they had in life. So they could easily build a relationship to the language. And I gotta say, it was an awesome time working in this company. I've met so many fantastic humans. I have learned so much and it was a brilliant, brilliant experience. And I'm so grateful for that. I directly experienced how powerful words are and that words create reality, words create worlds. And with words, we can create a positive world where we all can build self-esteem, where we can find joy, where we can do something that we thought we couldn't do. We can create a world where we can tap into a potential that we didn't even know we have. And thanks to a positive language, we can grow beyond what we thought was possible. So for me, it was a true pleasure and an honor to witness my students becoming successful in school or in their company and watching them, how they were building a more positive self-image. And I also learned how to teach a group of students of different age groups with very different levels of knowledge to, due to the fact that some had just started to learn English and others needed support graduating from school. And I had all of them in one group. <laughs> so I learned how to be there for each one, supporting their individual needs, while also creating a group setting where we can learn from each other and support each other. But that's a different story. Um, if you're interested in hearing it, um, well, I'd be happy to share it in another episode. You can just let me know via Instagram, send me an email, however you want to get in touch. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about it, I'd be happy to share it. Um, many years later, uh, I met one of my students. This is a beautiful story. Mm, back then, he was a kid and he was one of those kids who believed that he didn't have a talent for languages. We studied together and he was super bright. He was extremely intelligent and it was very, very easy to study with him. It was really pure joy. He was eager to learn and he made my work so, so 
easy. And when we met, he was all grown up and he was about to get married. And back then he was one of those kids, I don't have a talent for languages. Um, he was, he didn't like English and it was one of those kids labeled as being a problem case, but he really wasn't. No one is. And then when we met, he told me that he now works for a company and in this company, he is the go-to guy when it comes to English. He was so proud when he told me whenever a colleague needs something in English, a call, an email, whatever, they all come to him and he's the English expert in his company. And I was so, so touched. First that he told me. And then, of course, I was so proud of him. And it was a blessing and an honor to see that he is living his full potential. And that he is an inspiration for his colleagues. And that he had found a love for something that he kind of dreaded many, many years ago. And that's an amazing story. And I, I can tell you, I have goosebumps when I talk about it right now. So um, that can happen when we choose positive words, when we communicate with each other. So my point today is that words shape our reality, our image of ourselves, our thoughts, our actions. And I hope that you take this with you and I hope you mind your words and you choose the most positive words that come to mind now that you are aware of their power and their impact. Everything that I have learned back then, how we can make each other comfortable, how we can create an atmosphere where a student feels welcome, how we can support someone in their individuality while also creating a connection about all in, among all group members. And I learned about how a positive language can solve, dissolve problems and is a huge factor when it comes to building self-esteem and finding joy. So everything, all that and more that I've learned back then, it's all part of Yuna now. And Yuna has, we created, Tom and I created Yuna years later, but it's all in there. So everything we experience comes for a reason. <laughs> and if you're interested in Yuna, please have a look at my website. It's yuna.com yuna.com the link is in the show notes as always and um, you can subscribe to my newsletter and you can make sure something positive is in your mailbox every now and then and I would like to finish today's episode with saying that no one of us is a problem case Never, 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 never think of yourself as a problem case or something similar because I hope today I showed you that that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. We don't have to create a world like this. No human being is a problem case. Please make sure that if someone ever calls you that or something similar, make sure that you don't believe them. And also please make sure to not call somebody else that. Because now you know how words shape everything. Our thoughts, our actions, our image of ourselves, our interactions with others. Now you know how powerful words are. And even if you say them lightly or just for fun and you don't mean them, 
they still have impact and you can't take them back. So please, everyone, mind your words when you talk to others, when you talk about others, when you talk about yourself, and when you talk to yourself, when you think stuff about yourself, because words create worlds. They create your reality. Focus on your strengths and keep telling yourself that you are valuable exactly as you are. You are a gift for this world and the humans around you and just always remember that and then treat everybody else around you in a positive and kind way too. Focus on their strengths. Focus on what you love or like about them. And please, please, that's very important. Don't just think it. Tell them with words. <laughs> Tell them. Don't hold back. By telling them, you create a world that is fulfilling and successful for all of us. Just remember that it's an honor and it's very special that we have been given a life and that we are allowed to live on this amazing, beautiful planet and that the presence of every one of us is important and valuable. So just let me tell you again, because I don't think we can hear it enough. You are valuable. You are valuable exactly as you are. I talked about the power of words in another episode already called positive self-talk. Stop standing in your own way. Please check it out if you haven't already, especially if you know you have a tendency for negative self-talk. I've got amazing feedback that this is helpful and I really, really hope it helps you too. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you are here and that I am allowed to be a part of your life. Um, if you like my approach, check out my website. Please recommend my show to others. And you can also listen to me auf Deutsch in German. <laughs> I'm sending you a big, 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 big smile. I'm waving. Right now, I'm waving through the microphone. <laughs> Take care, everyone, wherever you are. Drive safely. Bon appétit. Have a lovely hike or run. Um, a successful ironing session and sweet dreams. If you are doing something else, let me know so I can think of you next time. Wherever you are, whatever you do, let positivity pervade your words. And they will touch hearts and they will hop into your thoughts and empower your actions. This is how you are creating a more beautiful, abundant, successful and a happier world for yourself and all of us. And please remember, create joy and bliss, shed the negative. The new normal is insanely positive. <laughs>